The following program is funded in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. I'm Jim Whaley. It's a great pleasure to welcome as my guest on this cinema showcase the stars of Robert Altman's provocative new film about Vincent van Gogh and his brother Theo. And they are the stars of the film, Tim Roth and Paul Rees. We'll have a scene from the film to show you, so I hope you'll join me as I talk with Tim Roth and Paul Rees on this Cinema Showcase. Thank you very much for joining the Cinema Showcase. And join me now and welcome to the program the stars of Robert Altman's film Vincent and Theo, Tim Roth, and Paul Rees. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking this time out. It's very good to see you. Good to be here. First of all, my congratulations to you on Vincent and Theo. This um, is, I don't think it's an understatement to call it a unique biographical film. We've, we've yeah. all seen biographical films in the past, innumerable ones that end up being sort of things like, and then I wrote, mm -hmm. and then I composed, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then I painted, etc. But this movie, I think, will be a real, in many senses, eye-opener for the viewer. What, is this attributable to, uh, uh, basically, to Mr. Altman, his, his approach to filmmaking? This is, it's the first time I've talked talk about this is this the first time that the, the relationship between the brothers has been you know looked at for, you know, which is uh, right. which is the only I mean in your opinion it's the only story yeah to, to, that there is yeah, I think we all realized that during the course of the filming that we were you know it was the only story to tell that without the relationship that wouldn't have been the painting so instead of concentrating on a, the, you know various episodes in his life it um uses the relationship of the brothers to, 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 to express it all. Mm -hmm. When you... It's well known, I think, that, that Altman is um, a big advocate of improvisation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he's also said that he's not as big an advocate of improvisation as a lot of people think he is. Think he is. <laughs> um, how did you find that aspect of working with him to be? I mean, it was an immense amount of freedom. Yeah, there? it's complete trust. He trusts you, and it's it's it's, it's liberating because you take on you take the responsibility for your performance. Mm -hmm. You're not told what to do. You don't. You're not reduced. You know, he wants to use all of you and add to it, and that's uh, it's quite a rare thing, I think. He once said um, that once he has the cast he wants, and he's very meticulous in his mm. casting. He said that the, the cast is 90% of it. Mm. Um, I wonder if that's not diminishing his role just a little bit, but... Well, he's, you're not aware of his, um, his input as, as much as other directors make you feel aware of theirs, you know. But at the end of it, when you see it, of course, it's all he's done, he's done everything. It's yeah. very, very clever. But he's more crafty than... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we would rewrite the scenes, we would improvise, we would sometimes um, not know what we were going to do until the camera was turning and so forth. And he gives you that freedom because he knows, I mean, that's what you're saying about casting, he knows yeah. that you are that kind of actor, that can, you can deal with that. Yeah. Having said what I said earlier about so many biographical films, and some of them have indeed, whatever their approach had been, some of them have turned out extremely well. Mm. Um, if you'll permit me to pay each of you the compliment of saying I have, um, I have rarely felt that two characters who lived were brought to the screen so vividly. It's almost as if we're um, in this film. It's almost as if we're uh, we're, we're looking in on a we're reading a diary. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's an exceptional experience, and mm -hmm. and and the two of you. Uh, 
truly are exceptional. The idea wasn't to glorify, which I think helps. I mean, it was true. The, the man is it was a, almost a workmanlike portrait of Potatoes. Yeah. And it made, it insisted that it was really a story of lonely and lonely people in Vincent's uh, case, a failure, complete failure. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't to them, I think yeah. this, this, the story, you know, the, the, the theme, if you like, is failure. Yeah. I mean, there are people who didn't succeed in any sense in their lifetime either personally or professionally. They were, they were you know, disasters there for me. So, um, you know, nevertheless had a great deal of integrity and a lot of fight in them and a lot of belief in what they did mm -hmm. and the, the various worlds that they occupy. Mm -hmm. How much research did you feel you had to do to bring these characters to the screen? Was the letters and We the wrote painting. the letters, basically. The letters is three volumes. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, he wrote yeah. a lot of letters. Great. Yeah. Now, uh, three times a day, sometimes he was writing. My word. Was it, was it Theo who was responsible for keeping, keeping the letters? And, and yes, I think so. I think t t um, Theo's mind was, uh, you know, quite meticulous and ordered. He had that about him. Uh, Vin presumably there were just as many letters back, but Vincent didn't keep any of them. <laughs> so, um, Yes, he, they, they were writing to each other two or three times a day. I mm. mean, it's an extraordinary correspondent. And, um, it would be very interesting to see the other half. Yes. What what, uh, I mean, yeah, to see what I the, wonder, the was yeah, writing. Right. Yeah, or what they'd be the doing chest. now, they'd be sort of faxing each other or something. <laughs> <like that. laughs> One day they will probably make some great discovery that uh, Vincent's letters are, are somewhere. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yes, who knows? What a discovery that would be. Yeah. Um, for, for those who have yet to see the film and are unaware of, of, of the story, really, the, the incredible story of Vincent and Theo, could you, describe, could you describe their relationship? Because it was really, I don't know how unusual it is uh, in the whole realm of, of brotherhood to have brothers this close, but their relationship went beyond mere closeness. It's almost as if they couldn't exist without the others. Yes, yeah. certainly that, I think. It, it was it Siamese twins? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Corsican brothers, I think. <laughs> it's an old theme, isn't it? It's, you know, biblical. But um, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad we've been able to tell that story. Um, and I'm sort of shocked that it's never been told before. I mean, people compare it to other films about, um, they, they were talking about dead ringers, actually, but that science fiction, and this right. is completely the truth as far as we know. Sure. So, um, it, it, it's, it's, I, no, I, I don't have a brother, so it was, it was a really, we became, we did become like brothers when we yes. were being very protective of each other, mm -hmm. um, probably to the annoyance of many people, yes. <laughs> many barmen we know. <laughs> so, you know, so, but we did, it was, it, this hasn't really left us, you know, we, did, we still remain quite close. What did you glean from reading the letters that that gave you the insight as to why Theo felt this mm. this intense love, protectionism, or whatever you want mm. to call it. It I went beyond the bounds of Yes, it it is it's an unnatural kind of closeness, isn't it? And I think it must, you know, come from the family. They were brought into this Dutch nonconformist family, very cold parents, I think. The mother particularly was a hard and um sympathetic woman and I think they were forced together and as you often find with um, the, the sort of sibling relationship you know the one dominant elder brother with the younger who's manipulated and the, 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 you know a, a, a reciprocal thing happens and they start to depend on each other within the family against mm. the family and take that outside and you go it's against the world and that's how they were it was them against the world and um, yeah, I think that's. And yet, in this evolved. case, you have the the younger brother, really, who is looking out for the for the older one. He did yes. that from the age of sixteen. Yeah, from from sixteen, he was working, working in galleries, sending money to Vincent and pretending it was from the father, just so that. I mean, it's an incredible self-sacrifice. You know, it's, it was, it's a wonderful thing to play that someone who gives all the yes. time, because you know we live in a world where everybody wants wants. And um, I would say it would um, 
this is of course a great generalization, but it would be if there is such a relationship right now um, amongst famous people, yeah. it, 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 we don't know about it. <laughs> no, no. I don't, think so. I don't think you can be that way. Today? No. Mm. I think you can emulate. But I don't think you can, you can genuinely be that way anymore. Which is a shame. I know that, or I, I presume that, that neither of you are, are art dealers, but we all know that in recent years the paintings of Vincent Van Gogh have, have mm. sold for astronomical sums yeah. of money. Why do you think, yeah, rather suddenly almost, um, his paintings have, 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 have done this? Well, who wants to do that one? <laughs> well, he's become one of the great sort of myths, isn't he, of the, of the, of the 20th century. He's crossed over the 100 years so effortlessly. There's something about the combination of the paintings and the history. Mm. If the man in the street knows that, that he cut off his ear, for example, they know that kind of detail. N nobody knows about Gauguin, for example, who's around at the same time. You know, it's the biographical aspect of it that that's hooked people. I think. I mean, he's also f uh, the filmmaking has taken it into. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> Lust for Life has probably put the paintings, the price of the paintings, up as much as anything else. <laughs> you know. True. Yeah. And here's uh, a. The fact of the facts of his life, I think, make paintings as it more interesting yeah. for buyers. Sure, know. I think they what, should be public the property. I don't think they should be sold. I think they should be hanging in galleries and not in. I agree with you, rather than in some mm -hmm. chairman's yeah. boardroom. Yeah, definitely, yeah, I think that's graceful. awful. I don't think they have the right to do that. Yeah. Especially something as we've been talking about, something that's passed into the public consciousness so so much. To take mm. it away and stick it in a vault seems to me. Uh, <laughs> wrong. I suppose we're just fortunate that, um, um, you know, the, the, the Sistine Chapel is, is uh, <laughs> can't be yes. safe from uh, such things. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they're banning people. Or from there. That would be sold for a yes. <laughs> yeah, piece by piece. Move, piece exactly. by piece moved to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is the highest uh, the highest price to Van Gogh? It's eighty two million. Eighty two million. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. for the irises. It was astonishing. Was it the Aristotle or Gasha? It was Gasha. Dr. Gasha is the last one. Gasha, yeah. Truly astonishing. It's funny because when we were making the film, the, the portrait of Gasha features in the film quite a lot, but at that time it wasn't a significant, it was a significant piece because it was a good one and everybody knew about it, but it wasn't, it's become like the sunflowers because it's sold mm. for 82 million. But when we were making the film, we didn't use that, know that. We just had it in it a lot. Usually lying on the floor. So. Yeah, it's almost treading on it. Now, obviously, it isn't, it isn't essential for any actor when they accept a role that they have a passion and interest in the subject, but were either of you interested in uh, Van Gogh? I, I was. What? I was brought up around, around, I went to art college before I went, became, or became an actor. So I was always aware, very aware of his paint. He was my father's hero, you know, so it's quite mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. useful way to get in the family's good books. <laughs> But he, he's, yes, I was always fascinated by him. I mean, you, you would, I, if you have any in, inkling of the story, you are fascinated. And what are the, what, are, what about you, Paul, were you? I, well, yes, I knew about Vincent, but I knew nothing about Theo, you know, that's mm -hmm. why, yeah. But, yeah. That's what's so marvelous about this film, is that we at last get to see the, the, the other side. Yes. Of, yeah. I don't know how. equally important. Uh, yeah. How can it's it have been? Can it be, have been considered sure. anything else? That's yeah. that's really my uh, my only complaint about Vincent Minnelli's mm. truly magnificent film, mm. *Lust for Life*, yeah. um, which is one of the most gorgeously photographed that's movies beautiful. ever. Mm. The great Freddie Young mm. yeah. photographed yeah. that, uh, and, and Kirk Douglas was certainly superb as as Van Gogh. But we saw nothing of one of, or very little, of the pivotal yeah. part of, mm. of mm. Vincent's life, which was his brother, mm. Theo. Yeah. Um, it's, it's which very I suppose, I mean, it was a Hollywood film after all, so... Mm. But it's very hard, I mean, to talk about syphilis and so forth in the 50s, and... True. I mean, he was very brave to do that anyway. He was yeah. warned off by John Wayne and so forth. Not to do it. Yeah. Um, but he, and he went, and it, went ahead and did it. Which was a, that was brave in itself. Sure. I, mean, I don't think... He, he would be, he, we could, it could have been talked about then so much. It is a shame. 
We have a scene um, from Vincent and Theo that I'd like to show the audience. Um, what do we need to know about this particular clip before we look at it? If it's, um, well, it's in the, my Theo van Gogh's Paris apartment, which is a kind of a bit of a slum. And when he comes back from Holland, where he's been paying this girl he wants to marry a visit, he comes back and finds that it's been turned into a worse slum by Vincent, and consequently they have this little bit of a row. A little row, <laughs> yes. Let's take a look at that now. Here's a scene from Robert Altman's film, Vincent and Theo. I want to know what's been going on here when I've been away. Look, what is the point of Paris? What is the whole point of Paris? It's to talk to people, it's to meet people, it's to talk to other archers. I think you... You'd better go to bed. And don't you tell me there's no market for my work! It's your job to make a market! If you can sell Toro, you can damn well sell me! What are you actually doing? What are you actually doing to sell my painting? You don't tell me what my job is! I'm doing everything I, I can to sell your paintings! And all I ask of you is that when I come home, it's a home. Oh, and how is the little Dutch dolly then? A scene from Vincent and Theo, starring my guests Tim Roth and Paul Rees. Um, the intensity of many of the scenes mm. in this movie is, is really quite astounding, and it's something that I urge audiences to see um, strongly. Um, when you when you first got the scripts, or when you were first um, when the project first came about, did you did you know immediately what your approach? I'll ask each of you individually mm -hmm. what your approach to Vincent would be. I mean, had had your had you been colored by anything, uh, things you had read, things you had seen, or did you try to approach him from a completely fresh point of view? I, I was very uncertain about the whole thing to, to, to begin with, but, but really it, it happened, making the character work happened um, when I'd met Paul, really, when we first met in, in, uh, in Holland, and it's, it was just an instinctive move in that direction. Um, those, that scene didn't, I didn't, don't think that scene existed in the script. So really? Certainly not in that form. No. So uh, it was something we improvised. I mean, you don't. Once we, once we found the people, that made it was made easy for us. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, what about you? Was it? Um, now you're dealing with Theo, with obviously with a character who is somewhat less well known. Sure, than yeah. So you, you had a little more latitude to absolutely. go in whatever direction you wanted. Much wider berth with Theo, but I agree with that, Tim on this. You know that we you responded to each other. And so the, the the relationship between the two formed each of us individually. I mean, so um, I d and I decided, you know, you also take from from the situation and forget the historical and art historical aspects of it. You just base it on two brothers. And it's funny we were talking earlier. And it never occurred to us that we were making a period piece when we were doing it. We didn't think, oh no, we must be really all the you know turn of the century kind of thing. It's just. We were playing a, a factual story about two brothers. So, you know, any research you do, any preparation, in a sense, goes out the window as soon as you start, Correct. because mm, you, you play the, a situation and a fact. Yeah, that's all. So um, we just responded to each other, basically. Mm -hmm. and kind of worked. What are some of the myths you think, or are there any myths that the film will more or less explode for people who? Um, think they know the story of, of Vincent? I don't know, I mean, that, that, that it was just him is the way <laughs> the that will be broke. Yeah. And he was very workmanlike about his approach. There was no, 
uh, you do. You get that impression precious. right off. That he, yeah, he's a work. He was a yeah. workman. It, painting was work. Yeah, he it was considered work. Yeah, um, it's not. It, it, it's not a precious film about art. Art's destroyed in it many times. Yeah, but, yeah. Because he's unhappy with it. And, what, you know, you, all right. Well, what? I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that's you know basically it, really. But he was uh, an obsessive about his work and less of a sort of vague lunatic, you know. That the the work was the thing that that was driving him and was obsessing him. Mm. I think that Tim does conveys that brilliantly. And when all is said and done, do you what what conclusions do you think the audience will, um, or do you hope the audience will take away about about Vincent and Theo? I I just want the audience to know that that, that there was there were, there were two people involved in it. But there was um, there is another story, you know, and uh, that they kind of understand it better, really. You know, one thing that that uh, I think certainly needs to be said is that for everything we learn about Vincent and Theo, which is a lot, mm. this film is enormously entertaining. Mm. The the, the, the narrative moves along mm. smoothly, briskly. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to be uh, a connoisseur of art mm. to enjoy it, mm. although it certainly doesn't hurt if you appreciate art. Mm. Uh, you don't really have to know anything about Vincent or Theo no. to enjoy the film. It has a, a wonderful sort of inner drive that mm. I think a lot of Alton's better films have. Mm. And I'm, I'm really glad to see that he has sort of returned to a, um, a form of formal filmmaking, if that's the proper word, that he sort of abandoned for a while, but he's he's back to with, with this film. Mm. It's, it's, he chose to do it a story of just two brothers. I mean, one of them painted, one of them helped, and yeah. tried to sell painting. It's, and it, the life that it led was just extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. So, and he did it, and everyone has said it's a, it's a move away from or into a new area. Yeah, so he's yeah. still at, at his age, and with all these remarkable films he's made, he's breaking new ground, which I, it can't, it can't be said by many know, other directors. Great. He you truly know. epitomizes. Um, I, I, I've had actors tell me this, and you can just tell me, mm -hmm. tell me if it's still true, that he is um, the best actors director they've ever worked with. Oh, he's great. And he's yeah, it's just a, you know he builds up a trust. And he believes in you, and that's all we want. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the time you're working with people who want want you to be smaller than you are in some way, not accept everything about you. So um, it's, it was a great kind of change to him. Mm -hmm. Obviously, neither of you um, sprang onto the screen unknown with with this film. Prior to Vincent and Theo, let me ask you if. Um, of of the works, be it in the, on on the stage or in films, are you most proud prior to Vincent and Theo? No, I mean, I've been very fortunate. I've worked with um, v the best of the British directors. I mean, mainly in t TV, film, and then in, then in film. Worked with Mike Lee, who improvises. I don't know if you had uh, he, a film called High Hopes. He, he did over here. Sure. It's purely improvisational. There's no script, no story. And it starts from scratch with a group of actors, and that's an ex extraordinary experience, and prepares you for stuff like this. Tom Stoppard and um, Stephen Frears, Peter Greenaway, people like that. You, know. you don't, you don't get much better than those people. Well, they're great. They're great people. But there's, there's, you know, it's talking about film, the art, the American art of filmmaking. There is yeah. incredible people here, yeah. which is a, oh, uh, yes. a bonus for us. Sure. Paul, I know. Um, I mentioned before we started, you, you have done some truly remarkable things uh, on stage and on film. But one film of yours I saw on, on videotape was Lionheart. Oh, God. That's great. I can imagine that. Now, this was, done, <laughs> this was done, though, truly by one of the uh, greatest of all filmmakers, which sadly turned out to be, I think, his next to last film, yes, Franklin yeah. Schaffner. Yeah. Um, so whatever the film turned out to be, yeah. uh, I imagine working with Schaffner oh, was Oh, it was wonderful an experience. experience. I mean, and he... I was at drama school in, uh, in London at Raja, and he came there and saw me, and, and you know, just it, it was a great thing for me. I was sort of 
but I was very happy to do it. Yeah, it, I don't think the film turned out particularly successfully. I think it got sort of lost in many ways. But um, I mean, it was a very good cast. Eric Stoltz, Gabriel, Gabriel Byrne, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, Coppola produced it. It was, uh, I don't know why it all went wrong, but it sort of did. That can happen with some of those big budget. This was a very yes, lavish affair. very right? lavish. And, um, yeah. It's, it, it's a curious kind of chemistry that makes something successful yeah. and something. All right. Prior to Vincent and Theo, then of of your of your stage, your television, or film works, um, does anything? Is there one thing of which you're most proud? It's, you know, every time you do something, that maybe so, I I did a, a comedy quite recently, and I was very very happy doing that. It was a sort of great liberation. You know, I'd never. I've always been seen as this rather grim. <laughs> A dramatic person, and um, it was just quite liberal. I think just I've worked with some wonderful people, and each project that you do has sort of you know I've learned I learned a lot from the Franklin Schaffner experience, sure. of course. But um, so there's every single thing I wouldn't like to think about one. You know, just you know I it, that it reminds me uh, some years ago I had the tremendous privilege and pleasure of, of uh, talking with Sir John Gilgood, and he. He said at that time that an actress should never grow too old to learn. Mm. That uh, with as much as he had done, he's still learning. I think that's always going to be the way, I think, for everybody. Yeah. I oh, you learn an immense sure. amount from doing this. Yeah. You must be wide open. You have to be wide open. I learned a great deal from making Vincent and Teo, I really did. I mean, from all, from Tim, from Altman, of course, and just every, you know, it's like I could never have done Teo the way I, the, they call him Teo, so mm -hmm. I can't help doing it, um, the way I did three years ago, for example. I couldn't, it would have been a different performance. A different one. Not necessarily better, not necessarily worse, it's sure. just different. And. Um, you know, that's what it is. It's a continual process, isn't it, of accepting things and using them and moving on. Exactly. Well, again, gentlemen, I want to wish you uh, much success with the film. My thanks to you. It's a marvelous film, and I, I urge everyone to go see it. And uh, if you're uh, ever in this area again, I, I hope you'll stop by. <laughs> Thank Thanks you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. My thanks to all of you for watching. Until next time, good night.